Welcome home, everybody. You're watching Legacy Television. I'm Jeremy Pearsons. Glad to have you with us today here at Legacy Church, Green Mountain Falls, Colorado, where God is doing amazing things. As a matter of fact, Right now, as I'm talking to you, there are huge machines right outside this building, tractors and bulldozers and men hard at work moving earth and moving dirt. We're getting a parking lot. Glory to God. They, you know, you need one of those when you have a church. So we're getting one and there's awesome progress taking place as we get ready to open this church to the community, uh, the surrounding places around us and to you. We want you to know that you are invited to come be a part of what's happening here at Legacy Church, Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. For quite some time now, you and I have been involved together in a buy up and build out project. And what that means, if you don't know, we're in a 30,000 square foot facility. Man, the Lord has put us in a beautiful place. It just needed some love. And that's what we've been doing for over a year now is just loving on this place and working on this place and getting it ready for you, for others who would come and be a part of this. And we're making awesome progress. As a matter of fact, uh, we've released faith for $100 a square foot and we have made amazing, miraculous progress. We're almost, right, right now, right about 90% complete with this phase of the project. Glory to God, that's before the doors even open. Can you imagine what God is going to do in and through this place once it's opened up? Praise the Lord. We want you to be a part of it if the Lord would lead you to. Just take a look real quick at some of the things that are going on around us, making great progress, like I said a moment ago, in the parking lot, getting ready uh, to, to welcome people and give them a safe place to pull up and park here. And then even in the sanctuary, we've been working in there now for a year and the Lord has just helped us so much. We're now at the place where we can begin finishing out uh, all the fine finishes that are going out, are going on in there. So good Good things are happening right now. I'd like to keep you updated with what's going on because so many of you partners with this ministry, you've sown into it. And, and it's such a special thing because maybe you live in another place in the country and this is not per se the church that you go to. Well, what you're doing is you are sowing a church. You are sowing a church to the people in this community. And I know the Lord sees it and receives it and we call you blessed for it. In Jesus name. If you want to be a part of this buy up and build out project, like I said, we're at 90% complete. So now's the time to get involved with this phase. A number of ways you can do that. If you're watching inside the United States, one of the quickest and safest ways to do it is to text your offering. Just text LTV and any dollar amount to the number 28950. That's going to go into this buy up and build out project. If you'd like to give online, you can do that as well at pearsonsministries.com. Or if you'd like to give via the mail, use the address that you see there on your screen. And, and we're not putting any pressure on anybody. This is just if this vision stirs in your heart, then jump on board with it. We receive the seed. We call you blessed in Jesus name. Right now, let's go back into church. We've got a good word from God as we've been meeting together right here in this room as a team of volunteers and staff and family as we get ready to open these doors. Let's see what the Lord's saying to us and I'll be back in just a moment. I believe last Sunday the Lord really spoke to us. And those of you who are here, I think you'd agree if you were watching online. I hope you would agree. If you missed it, go back and get that. It's available to you. Everything that we do here at Legacy Church on a Sunday morning, we're putting for free on the Legacy Church podcast. So make sure you check that out and check into what the Lord's been saying to us. You know, what the Lord says to us on a Sunday morning in church uh, is supposed to be feeding you on a day-to-day -day basis. And there are a lot of questions being answered, I believe, in church on Sunday that uh, if you're not hearing them, it can be difficult to, to find it later on. Uh, I've actually experienced the Lord do this with me and Sarah from time to time when he's instructed us specifically to go away somewhere and to rest, uh, take some time away. I've had the Lord tell me, it's been a number of years ago, he said, Jeremy, I'm going to be talking to you in that place, whether you're there to hear it or not. I'm going to be talking to you in that place, whether you're there to hear it or not. What's he saying? There's something specific that you need to get, and you're only going to get it right there. Well, the same thing's true, if not more so, when it comes to the church that you're a part of. There are questions that are being answered. The Lord is speaking. 
Amen, everybody. The Lord is talking to us in these services, and he's answering questions whether you're here or online to hear it or not. That's why it's so important that we tune in. And the Lord really spoke to us about some things last week uh, about the growth of our church, about the explosive growth of this place. And we looked in the book of Acts, how the Spirit of God hit the disciples and they were filled with the Spirit and Peter spoke boldly. And that's going to be one of the big keys to our growth is being filled with the Spirit. And it, in case anybody's wondering, we are an Acts chapter 2 kind of church. We are Holy Spirit people. And if that turns you off or confuses you, then just hang around for a minute. Uh, don't get upset. Don't turn anything off just yet. Find out what the scripture says because uh, you may be, want to be one of these kind of people too. In the book of Acts chapter 18, I want you to believe in God with me today. There's some things in here I'm excited to, to get out and, and I know the Lord would say some, some powerful things to us. Acts chapter 18, look at verse 24. It says, now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Verse 25 says, this man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he, only, he knew only the baptism of John. So we're being introduced here to a man named Apollos and being introduced to his ministry. And the Bible says, gives us some details about where he's from. He's born in, from a, a city called Alexandria. Uh, Alexandria was a city in Egypt, huge city, major city, uh, high education. Um, it was kind of a center of politics and a center, like I said, of education and commerce. There was a famous, massive library in this city. And this man, Apollos, a well-read man, an educated man, we even find out from the Bible that he was eloquent. Isn't that what it said? An eloquent man. Man, if the Bible says you're eloquent, you are eloquent. And that's what we're finding out about this guy. He's, he's got a great education. He's eloquent. He was mighty in the scriptures. The Bible tells us he came to Ephesus. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. He'd heard some things. Even where he was from, the, the gospel, if you will, had made it to him. He heard some things. He'd been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit. That means this guy was passionate. Yes. Anybody else love passionate people? Yes. Yes. You ever listen to a passionate person? And even if you didn't totally know everything they were talking about, you're like, I believe that. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. People's yes. passion can be persuasive. Yes. And we were intended by God to be passionate people. Yes. Not something we put on, not something we fake, but we've been given something to be passionate about. Yes. Something to be fervent in spirit, excited about. Now, you do have to be careful about this. You can't just let somebody else's passion persuade you. You need to be able to listen through it and find out if there's truth in it. And that's one of the things I think we're dealing with right now. Maybe we always have in the church, but we're seeing it right now. We've got passionate people and maybe even good-hearted and well-meaning, but still you and I have to have the spiritual wherewithal, if I can, to be able to look into it and say, okay, but is there truth in it? Am I hearing the truth or am I just jumping on board with somebody who's excited? Passion's a good thing, but it's got to be rooted in the truth. Here's Apollos. He's passionate, fervent in spirit. He spoke, the Bible says, and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. The baptism of John. Of course, talking about John the Baptist. And you go back through the Gospels and you look at the ministry of John the Baptist. This is somebody who, how do you even say it? The place he holds in the history of Christianity and church history, and I imagine even in the halls of heaven itself, his entire life was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. There's one coming who will 
prepare the way of the Lord. He'll be the, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Yes. And his whole life was the fulfillment of that prophecy. And his ministry, John the Baptist, that's not because of the church he went to. It's because of what he did in his ministry, baptize people. And we know he was an interesting guy, peculiar guy. But we also know that the anointing was on him big, strong. And he went out to the River Jordan and he was preaching. His entire ministry could be summed up in just a couple of words. Number one, repent. That was John the Baptist's ministry. Repent. But the other side of his ministry was there's one coming. There's another one coming. He's coming after me. Repent because there's one coming. And needless to say, he was passionate about it. I mean, people came to him, the common people. The scripture tells us that tax collectors, who were some of the most hated and ruthless people of the day, came to him. Soldiers in the army came to John. Uh, the, The Pharisees and the scribes themselves all came out. People Some people came because they were drawn and convicted by this word and this call to repent. Others just came out to see what in the world is going on out there. But crowds, huge crowds were coming. But the message, the whole message was repent, repent, repent of your sin. And it wasn't just that it was his message. You look in the the gospels for yourself. People came and they just started confessing their sins. (laughs) Now, that's the anointing. That's the grace of God. That's the, 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 the moving of the Spirit of God, if you will, to a degree, to the degree he was in the earth at the time. But for somebody to come and John say, repent, and they say, okay, yeah. and then just start coming out with it. I did this, and I did that, and I did it with that one, and I did this, and I stole that, and I cheated. And here's people just confessing their sin. That's a big move. And there were those that John spoke to, the ones that came to hear him that were not there to repent, not there to confess. And he looked straight in the eye of the most religious people of the day. And he said, you brood of vipers. And he spoke to them so plainly and so boldly. And he said, even now the ax is laid to the root of this tree. And whatever tree isn't bearing fruit, it will be plucked up. This man's not afraid. That's the ministry that this guy knew. You see what I'm saying? That's the ministry that Apollos had come to know. Now, this is some 50 years, well, maybe 20 years or so, I think, after Jesus had gone to the cross. But he hears about this ministry of John the Baptist. And so that's what Apollos' ministry is. What do you think Apollos is preaching? Repent, right? He knew the baptism of John. Repent, repent, repent. Now, if that's all, if that's all God had made available to us, given us the opportunity to repent and forgiven us of our sin, if that's all he ever did, that would be wonderful. Wouldn't it? I mean, if, if all he ever did was wash away your sin, that would be, that, that, I mean, you could say that'd be enough, right? If all he ever did was make a way for you and I to make heaven our home in eternity, yeah. if that was it, that would be enough to be thankful for. Yes. We could live every single day so grateful, so thankful. Why? Because he didn't have to do it. Yeah. It wasn't like you earned it. It wasn't like I deserved it. Right. It was a gift. Yeah. And if the only message that John or Jesus or anybody ever preached, if all God ever gave anybody to say was repent and I'll forgive you, we'd have enough to be thankful for. Yeah. But yeah. there's more. There's more. Right? Yes. Would you agree? Yes. As a matter of fact, this says he preached accurately the things of the Lord. He preached what John preached. He preached about Jesus that came after John. But he only knew the baptism of John in verse 26. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. And when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God. Check this out. More accurately. 
And I thought he preached accurately. He did. But there was more. more. Say that out loud. There's There's more. He preached accurately. He preached boldly. And it was the truth. But when these two, Priscilla and Aquila... We won't get into their whole history, but they, they were partners of Paul and, and they heard him preaching and they said, yeah, man, he, he's right about that, but he doesn't know everything. He doesn't know, he doesn't know the more. He doesn't know what came after that. So the Bible says they pulled him aside and I don't know. We don't have a lot of details about that meeting. If it was once, if it was a lunch, if it was a brunch, if it was a sit down, or if, it, if they met with each other and met with each other over and over. But whatever it was and however it came out, they explained to him, there's more. There's more. More than what? More than repentance? More than forgiveness? More than just baptism? As wonderful as all those things are, as life-changing as they are, the good news is there's more. There's more. more. And I don't know exactly how Apollos responded to it. I don't know if when they said, hey, there's more, he said, there's more? There's more? It gets better? It's better than this because evidently he was so passionate about what he believed that the Bible itself tells us, man, this guy's fervent in spirit. And we know from other places in Scripture that when he preached, it was beautiful. It was so gracious. It was eloquent. It was persuasive. And if you were to tell this guy, hey, that's good, but there's more, you know what he'd probably say? Same thing many people have said since this day. There's more? Are you telling me there's more? I can have more. There's more to this friendship and fellowship with God through Jesus than than just my sins being. What do you mean there's more? No, there is. And they pulled him aside and they began to explain to him. And I like what the Bible says. They explained to him the way of God more accurately. That word could could mean more completely, more perfectly. There's more. Say it again. There's more. more. And when he desired to cross Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. Man, I thank God for the people who have helped us who believe through grace. He's talking about the ministry gifts, the pastors, the teachers, the the prophets and evangelists and apostles, the ministry gifts, those who have helped us who believe through grace. Verse 28, for he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. If you're like me and somebody tells you there's more, even if you're enjoying what you've got, even if what you've got is the best it's ever been, and I believe that we're we're beginning to touch some of that. I know our family is here, having moved here and getting this thing started, we are experiencing things as a family we never had before. This is the best. I'm telling you the best we've ever had it. There's more peace in our home than there's ever been. There's more vision. There's more excitement. There's more fun. We're having more fun than we've ever had. Guess what? There's more. There's more. And if you're like me and somebody says, there's more, you're like, okay, where, how? Show me. Point the way. I want to know where it is. How do I get to it? Where is the door to more? Point me to the door and I'm going through it. Anybody else like that? That's the way we're supposed to be. And in the things of God, guess what? There's more. There's more. Now, verse 19, or excuse me, chapter 19 These things weren't written in chapter and verse, so let's connect them. We're talking about Apollos who came to Ephesus and he was preaching. He's preaching the baptism of John and it was good and it was right. And Priscilla and Aquila heard it and they said, that's good, man. But just guess what? Check this out. There's more. And he said, there's more. They said, there's more. And they began to explain to him, here's what's more. And like I said, we don't know the whole conversation, but we start to get a glimpse of what may have been missing in his ministry. Chapter 19. It happened while Apollos was at Corinth. So when it said he went to Achaia or Achaia, however you say it, uh, uh, I believe that is in 
Corinth, or Corinth is there. So he went to Corinth, and Paul, chapter 19, verse 1, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. So Apollos just left Ephesus. He's in Corinth. Now Paul's in Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, verse 2, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So he's talking to disciples in Ephesus. Chances are he's talking to people who became believers as the result of Apollos' ministry. Are you tracking with me here? These people heard Apollos preach. So what did they hear him preach? Repentance. Repentance. They preached that, that John baptized and you could repent and one came after him. And it was all right and it was all good. It was true. And these guys heard it. The Bible says they're disciples. But Paul said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? I like their answer. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> what is this Holy Spirit you speak of? We never even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. So what's the answer? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? What, what's the answer? In a word? No. no. No, they didn't. Somebody say there's more. There's more. They said, we've not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul said in verse 3, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. So now you know. Now you know what they heard. Now you know who they heard it from. They said, we've been baptized into John's baptism. And Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6, and when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they yes. spoke with tongues and prophesied. Yes. Yes. There's the more. There's the more. That's it right there. Come on. Paul said, here's the door. Here's the door that's going to take you into more. Yes. Right here. I know what you heard. It was good. It was right. It was true. But have you heard about the Holy Spirit? Come on. And they said, no. Nobody mentioned anything about a, what would you say? Holy Spirit. He said, let me tell you about it. Yes. And he laid his hands on them. And just as they had been baptized in John's baptism, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Yeah. It's, the more. Yeah. it's the more. It's the more. The Holy Spirit is the door into more.
The door to more. That's what we've been talking about on these broadcasts this week and last week. The door to more. You know, as good as it is to be saved and to be forgiven and to have all your sins washed away completely, the good news is there's even more. And if that's all God ever did for us, that would be enough to be thankful. But that's not all he did. Even Jesus himself said, there's more I have to say to you. There's more I want to show you. But he said it would take the Holy Spirit to, to, to speak to us and to guide us into all the truth. You can be filled with the Spirit of God. His Holy Spirit, being baptized and filled with his Holy Spirit is the door to more. More of what? More of God more of his goodness, more of his leadership in your life. And, and when you live without the Holy Spirit, you're living without so much. You're living without that daily leadership. You're living without that daily comfort and that daily help. So I'm believing God right now with you that you would be filled with his Holy Spirit. How does that work? How does that happen? It's so simple. It's the same way you were born again when you said, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Now say this, Jesus Fill me with your Holy Spirit and then just yield to it. And as he would fill you up and you begin to speak, just yield to it. There is more for you and for every believer. Tune in next week to Legacy Television. We're going to keep talking about these things as the Lord leads us. We love you so much and we'll see you next time on Legacy TV. Bye-bye.